You are listening to Read This Book, a Prince George Public Library podcast. We gratefully acknowledge that we conduct our work on the ancestral lands of the Clele Tene. Hello, everyone. I am Leslie. Each episode, a special guest will tell us about a book in our collection that has inspired, surprised, or captured them, and why we should read it. Today's guest is Austin. Although Austin considers himself a bit of a fantasy nerd, Austin reads from a wide variety of genres, including dystopian and speculative fiction, sci-fi, and as well as popular and contemporary titles. He also enjoys reading graphic novels. Having been on a graphic novel kick, Austin is currently reading Walter Scott's Wendy series. Austin's favorite childhood books are Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. Please welcome Austin. Hello, Leslie. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Austin, I think we should get pretty serious. Sure. You and I work together, and we discuss a lot of things at work. We do. And I realize I don't actually think that we discuss books that much. Why do you think that is? That's interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, people that are outside of the library see us as you know constantly talking about books Mm -hmm. and really like besides sometimes our breaks when we see each other reading things you know our minds are occupied by other things you know and there's so many books that people come in to request that you know very rarely have we read a large portion of them Mm -hmm. so yeah you're right it it doesn't come up a lot no which is interesting at least not as much as the world outside might think yeah yeah yeah, and unless, you know, you have a coworker that you read really similar things, you know, and you're mm-hmm. constantly talking about it, it, yeah, it doesn't happen. So I'm just going to ask you, I'm going to put you right on the spot. Sure. I don't think we're friends on Goodreads. Oh. Would you like to be my sure. Goodreads friend? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. No, I'm you happy. heard it here, folks. <laughs> That's commitment. I do use my Goodreads, yep. like, religiously, but I'm not the most, I'm not the quickest reader. That's okay. So, you know, it's, That's okay. it, I do use it, but it's sparse. I also use, often read like pretty big books because I'm right. a big fantasy person. So, you know, it'll be like, is Austin reading? And I am, I'm just, you know, <laughs> taking my time. So I think we should also talk about uh, Magnus. Oh, sure. Who is your puppy. Yes. And has become quite internet famous, I believe. Yeah. Um, through, actually through the library. Yes, through the library. Uh, yes. Through my um, Insta. He was a special guest on Storytime and in Instagram stories. Yeah. You now have the opportunity and this beautiful <laughs> platform. Is there something you would like the world to know about Magnus that we don't already Ooh. know? <laughs> I don't know. Not really. He's <laughs> okay. like, yeah, well, it's... it's has he Has he? I mean, I can talk about Magnus forever. Books? No, he hasn't, which... We have like some pretty low bookshelves, but he's never been interested in my partner's library as well. Um, so we have lots of books around and he's never been interested really in okay. eating or reading the books. <laughs> um, but no, I don't know. Right now he's really shedding a lot, which we, he's his part poodle. So we were like, he won't shed. And that was a lie. So uh, and he's white and we mainly wear black clothes. So, you know, so that's interesting. That's uh, fascinating. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. You brought Severance by Ling Ma. Can you give us a brief summary about sure. the book? So the book, it's uh, about, I think, it's, a, it's around 300 pages, but it really does cover a lot of ground. There's multiple timelines kind of going on. But essentially, it's about a, a young woman. She's a first-generation Chinese immigrant, and she lives in New York and works in a publishing firm. And she's very much, you know, a person of routine and habit, kind of goes about her daily life, you know, commuting to and from work, really doesn't have too much of a life outside of work. And during this time, I think it takes place in 2011, during this time, a pandemic begins uh, that originates in, in China called the Shen Fever, I believe. It, be, it is like a zombie apocalypse, but they aren't a typical zombie. It's okay. more the people that are infected with it are stuck in a routine that they used to do. So, you know, someone that, this people that are stuck just like in their bathroom brushing their hair, until the end of time, that sort of thing. Wow. Um, so it's kind of interesting. So people around her are infected by this, but she seems to be immune oh. at, in some ways and is um, still working her job kind of thing. And eventually 
the story sort of the story in the present times eventually she groups up with a a group of other people that are survivors and kind of is traveling across America with them so the story kind of takes place in this past when she's at work and is kind of witnessing this dying New York and then sort of the present when she's uh, traveling in the apocalypse sort of thing so is this a horror book or is this a like a it's more satirical okay for sure so I think I often see it described as like satirical sci-fi or dystopian sci-fi there is like maybe one or two moments that are quite like you know heart racing sort of intense right but there's a lot of humor in it as well yeah so I really don't think it's too heavy you know it's more interested in being thought-provoking and interesting than being you know terrifying Right. Now, one of my favorite zombie pop culture is uh, Shaun of the Dead. Okay. And have you seen Shaun of the Dead? I have, but not for a long time. Okay. Yeah. I usually watch it about once a year. (laughs) And this is a spoiler alert for a movie that I think that is like 10 or 20 years old. So it's if you don't want to hear this, please turn off. At the end of that movie, they realize that... So, like, humanity has won, has beaten back the zombies. And they realize that the zombies are very good at routine jobs. Oh, yeah. They hire some of them back. And so, like, trolley boys are just pushing the trolleys back and forth between the grocery yeah. store like they always did uh, and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so that's really interesting to me because is this a zombie trip that I just wasn't aware of? Or did Ling Ma also really like Shaun of the Dead? Yeah, I'm not sure. I know I read in some interviews that she was really influenced by um, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Um, and The Walking Dead. Right. Uh, which were, of course, big big at the time. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. No, that's interesting. It, it is like a thing. I think it's – it kind of reminds me of that movie as well with um, – The Zombie Falls in Love. Oh. Like warm yeah. Bodies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Warm Bodies as well. Kind of this humanization of zombies a little bit. Yeah. Which yeah. is interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah. Zombies – are so rich with possibilities Mm -hmm. we can continue to explore what that means yeah and I think this book as well for people that I'm not a big like apocalyptic fiction reader but I think this book you know and not to speak ill of the genre but I think for people that are looking for something with a bit more literary merit and you know interesting themes throughout I think this book really could could be of interest to those readers excellent Excellent. I'm I'm just here for the apocalypse. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Would you please tell us why we should read this book? Sure. So Severance, uh, I read it about a bit over a year ago, and it was published, I believe, in 2018. And it's kind of a controversial pick because I believe it's a great book, but it is about, in many ways, a global pandemic. So, you know, mm-hmm. which I think some people right now will be interested in reading, but some people will say, nah, I'm already living through that. I don't really want to read it. Of course, it's quite like, you know, very different in that it's closer to a zombie apocalypse than what we are currently dealing with. But um, I think it's a really interesting read, especially to read right now, because it does offer that perspective of modern life during a, a pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, I read it right before COVID really started ramping up in Canada and I found it really interesting to sort of the the way it mirrored a lot of things that were happening at the time in the book and I think that makes it it's a great book and I but I think right now it's a particularly interesting read so did you choose to read it because of COVID-19 or were it was it just a no I I read it in like January February last year so it was really before you know it was on my radar but before it really influenced my life I read it more uh, my partner had it and Uh, They recommended it to me, Uh, but, uh, you know, I think maybe as I was reading it, I was learning more about COVID, which made it interesting, but no, it wasn't really related at the time. Though I think it's gotten more press because of that and kind of had a resurgence because of COVID. Yes. I also heard that people were watching horror movies and that Mm. horror books and everything were really going up like right at the beginning. Yeah. Um, And that makes me, uh, that makes me really curious that people at such a terrible time wanted to read about terrible things for sure like i know like the movie contagion was really popular on netflix Mm -hmm. and like that sort of thing so i think you know for those sorts of people (laughs) i think this book can be really interesting and fascinating could you uh without spoilers sure uh could you describe severance in three words sure um 
I wrote down like a big list of like all the themes in this book because there's yes. so many. I will, I will pick three, but I okay. do think it's a book that it's a positive, but it's also it's like w- definitely one thing you hear people say is like it's so hard to cover all the ground that she tried to cover. And this was her d- debut novel as well. So it's just, you know, it's a lot of different things going on at once. Mm-hmm. But to choose three words, mm-hmm. I think apocalypse Excellent. Is, that's, so that's for me. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so apocalypse, I think, is important. Uh, routine is a second one that I think was maybe a part that really interested me the most of the novel. Might not be something that everyone is really like drawn to in it, but I mm-hmm. found that aspect really interesting. And the third that I'll say is capitalism. Because <laughs> a lot of it has to do with workplace culture and like workplace millennial culture. And, you know, yeah. So I think that is like, <laughs> I know it's like something I haven't even brought up yet, but it just kind of shows the layers of the book. That That's a really big part of it Yeah. as well. That's really cool. I, apocalypse, routine, capitalism. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that could go, could go really well, like on a coffee mug. Um, you know, just yeah, coffee. in any order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. yeah, no, I think those are like three of the things. And I think, I don't know. I think it's really interesting right now, especially through that lens of capitalism and like how our current pandemic really like influence yeah. the way companies act and things like that, I think is really an interesting would part you, of this book. Would you say reading, reading this book and then experiencing global pandemic for an entire year, were you able to draw comparisons between the two? And like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cause it is a big part of it is she's, you know, still at work. People are beginning to work from home and sort of the weirdness of that, you know, this part's definitely about like sort of how, quiet the streets of New York finally were you know and and that literally happened you know people were posting pictures and videos of that so I think yeah definitely and I know last year like me and my partner who both read the book were really talking a lot about it and being like this reminds us of that part from Severance so yeah it's interesting and also I think a big part of it too which I've seen people write about is the fact that in this book it is a fever that originated from China it's called the Shen fever and like you know the character in the book is Chinese and it's interesting the sort of attitudes and sort of the behavior that went around that in real life as well. yeah so. yeah and I yeah I think it's still going on yeah 100% yeah. so you said this uh this is a fever that sort of traps you in a routine mm-hmm. so if you became fevered tomorrow based on this type of fever what routine would you likely find yourself repeating until you withered away wow that's a good question it's tough because I'd like to say something cool, <laughs> <laughs> but I know the answer would be sitting, kind of lying on our love seat awkwardly because I'm pretty tall and I don't fit on it, but I always find myself lying there and like scrolling through my phone, which I think a lot of people's answer would be, <laughs> but you know, it's true. If I wasn't at work, I guess, if I was at home, okay, that would be a routine. Okay, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's really fair. <laughs> On the couch. You know, maybe in another year it would be different, but right now, yeah. Okay. That's the routine. Okay. Well, I can't fault you there. <laughs> I can't fault you there. What are some other books that you might recommend if you like Severance? Yeah. Sure. A few that I thought of. Station Eleven. That's also oh. told in two timelines. Yeah. So I think yeah. that really makes it feel similar. The whole, uh, you know, group of people traveling across pandemic. Mm-hmm. Well, like Apocalypse, I think is really similar and i think just it being a book about an apocalypse without really being about an apocalypse you know what i mean i think that would be a really solid pick okay it's a book of essays that i haven't read all the essays in uh trick mirror by gio talentio okay i've heard of that one. i haven't actually read it yet which i think a lot of it is about sort of you know millennial online culture that sort of thing which Mm. i think could draw some similarities and also has a lot of humor and dark humor in it as well and my final pick which have you ever seen the show search party I'm only picking it because this book also has a lot to do with like vain millennial life sort of thing in some funny ways. And that show, that's what it's like all about. And it's really good dark humor. And I think it's two things I like and I think they both do it really well. So that would be another recommendation. Okay. So Search Party, you would recommend for its dark humor. And it also takes place in New York and follows young professionals. You know, I think there's some similarities there. It's a bit of a stretch, but I think (laughs) there's like someone out there who's listening it might be my partner who's <laughs> like, yeah, I agree. So he's like, spot on. Yeah. You nailed it. Yes. Excellent. I have a little game. Would sure. you like to play a game of this or that? 
Yeah, 100%. Okay. So, and for those of you who don't know, with this or that, I am going to suggest two options and as quickly as you can so that you don't have time to overthink it and you just follow your instincts. Just respond with your choice back are, to me. Are they related to the to the book? Or just... <laughs> that, well, they're kind of related to books okay. in general, but yes, not your book. Sure. Because I haven't read your book yet. Sounds good. Uh, okay, so here we go. <clears throat> Hardcover or paperback? Hardcover. Ebooks or audiobooks? Ebooks. Cats or dogs? Dogs. <laughs> bestsellers or classics? Ooh. I would probably say bestsellers, but I like to. For a while, I was like alternating. Right. I was reading like for every bestseller I read, I read a classic. Okay. And so I like to try and at least every year read a few classics. Yeah. So I definitely like both, but I would say bestsellers. Okay. Do you like to stay in or go out? Uh, <laughs> I'm just <laughs> realizing. <laughs> I'd say go out. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. A television series or movie adaptation? Mm, television okay. series. Small town or big city? Uh, I think big city. Uh, routine or spontaneity? Routine, routine, I have to say. And finally, silent reading or ukulele jam? <laughs> um, Guys, fat, like, with your hands. Yeah, uh, I would say ukulele jam. <laughs> But like once a month. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but so if I could just choose one or the other in my life, <laughs> yeah, I feel like more sad with the lack of live music. Than, awesome. You know. Okay. So if it really comes down to it, the tough choice, ukulele jam. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So Austin, I want to say thank you so much for coming. It's been an absolute delight to talk to you about books at work yes yeah it's been uh, lots of fun uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add for us yeah i definitely recommend severance to people who don't mind reading about maybe a situation that mirrors their lives a bit right now uh, it is available at the library and it has very sort of an unassuming cover it's like light pastel pink i think it's supposed to be like a pink slip kind of thing but don't judge a book by its cover it is really interesting and apocalyptic thank you so much yeah no problem and we'll talk to you soon sounds good thank you for listening to read this book a Prince George Public Library podcast. Please join us every two weeks to discover a new book or visit pgpl.ca to explore our catalog.